Supplements, let's talk a little bit about supplements. I get asked all the time what I use. I can't really tell people what to use in whatever country they're in because there are different regulations. What I can say is you wanna look for something that you trust and is really clean. And I say that standing here with lots of products by one company in front of me. Momentous. I really like their products, not necessarily because they are third-party tested, they're really clean, and I really appreciate the ethos that goes into making them, but I partner with them and I agree with them because of their advocacy behind the scenes. We got in front of Congress to talk about women's health and how there has been different policy changes for collegiate athletes in their health. So yes, I'm going to show Momentus because I love the people behind the company, I love the advocacy behind the company, and they're really good, clean products. The ones that I use the most from them is their protein powder, either their plant-based or their unflavored whey. This is their 100% plant protein, really mixable, and it's great. I love their creatine, so I always talk about creatine and looking for crea pure. So we look at creatine and why we wanna use it. So creatine is a natural thing that occurs in the body. So we go through creatine whenever we have fast energetics. So you think about the first zero to 20 seconds of any kind of energy system within the body, brain, heart, muscle, gut. And we see that creatine monohydrate is so important for health especially brain health. And we hear about it from a bodybuilding background where we have to use five grams twice a day with carbohydrate to really boost the amount of creatine that's in the muscle. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about three to five grams daily. You can take a, a teaspoon and stir in your coffee because it's just a very easy powder that's really mixable. It doesn't taste like anything. It takes about three weeks to fully saturate. But we see from RCTs or randomized control trials for women that using creatine can help bring women out of an anxiety or a depressive state much faster than just using something like a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. We can look at Crea Vitalis website, Creatine for Health website, they're both one and the same. And it has a list of all the most recent publications on creatine for the health aspects, not just muscle performance. Collagen, I can't use collagen, but I wanted to bring it up. My husband uses it for joints and other structural aspects, but as a plant-based individual, I don't use collagen. There is a confusion between collagen protein and something like a normal protein powder. Collagen protein is not what we think of when we're using post-exercise protein, because it's a structural protein. It does not go into the quantification of your dietary protein. So if we're looking at collagen, there's two kinds. We have a native collagen and a peptide. A native collagen, when ingested, has an interaction with your immune system to reduce the inflammation and the signaling to degrade your cartilage. We see peptides are small bits of that whole collagen that are actually digested. And those small bits of peptides go to the target tissue and are used to regenerate some of the cartilage, but also to trigger a response to stop Stop degrading the cartilage. So it's a structural protein. If you want good hair, you want good skin, you want good nails, you want good joints, you're going for collagen. If you want muscle, muscle protein synthesis, nerve, bone, all of the things for dietary protein, you go for a protein supplement that is plant-based or whey isolate. The other must-haves really is an omega-3. It's really important for women who are super active. We look at a cellular aspect of increasing our oxidative and antioxidative status. Omega-3s are really essential for brain health, cellular health, and so it's one of my go-tos for sure. And then we get to adaptogens. These are two that I use on the regular. I use rhodiola and ashwagandha. So I'll take a step back and tell you what an adaptogen is. An adaptogen is a plant compound that has an effect in the body that we don't normally see with a pharmaceutical. The best way I can explain it is if we look at seaweed and we see seaweed changes different colors. When it is in a dark, cold part of the ocean, it has a higher protein content and it in itself is dark. When that same plant comes up closer to the surface in the summer months, 
It becomes lighter in color and has a reduced protein composition. The reason for that is it's adapting to the environment. So a plant in itself can adapt to different situations, to different stressors. So there are certain plants that grow in really environmentally challenging conditions. So we can look at maca, we can look at ashagonda, we can look at rhodiola. They adapt to the harsh environment that it's in. And because it can adapt, that same compound has a response to our human stress system. So if we look at something like rhodiola, it has multifactorial effect on the body. We can see that it modulates estrogen for peri and postmenopausal women. So that means it either increases the sensitivity of your receptors or decreases the sensitivity based on what your own individual body needs. It also has an effect on cortisol. It modulates your cortisol receptors as well. So it helps with that tired but wired feeling by dropping cortisol's effect on the body so that you can get into more of a parasympathetic state. When I'm traveling with jet lag, I use it to help me get into a parasympathetic state for sleeping so that it can help my body reset its circadian rhythm and get me out of a jet lag state. With ashagonda, it's an overall stress reducer because it has a direct effect on cortisol, cortisol responses, but it also has an effect on thyroid. So it does have a contraindication for individuals who are using any kind of thyroid medication because again, its adaptogenic response is it understands how stressed your body is from a metabolic as well as an autonomic nervous system. So it can adjust your thyroid hormone sensitivity, but it also affects cortisol and how your body responds to cortisol. So it's another one if you're going into a highly stressed situation or you're living a highly stressed life, it helps modulate that stress to reduce that overarching tired but wired feeling. So that would be the cadre of supplements that I use on the regular. And when we're looking at all of our individual basis of when do we use supplements, they are actually that A supplement. We wanna look at real food first but sometimes there are holes in our diet where we need to fill, and that's where some supplementation can come into play. Or it might be that we don't wanna go onto a true westernized pharmaceutical so that we look to use adaptogens to help modulate some of the effects that a pharmaceutical would. But again, it's an individual journey, it's an individual basis. I'm just sharing with what I use and working with companies that I trust. So thanks for watching, and I know you're gonna have a multitude of questions about supplements. So if you drop a comment and have a question about a supplement, we'll try to get to it as fast as we can and give you some insight of where to go to find more information about clean supplements and what ones actually work for women. Because again, there's not a lot of research out there that shows there's efficacy for everything for women. So again, thanks for watching and drop a comment here and there.